Hey, what's up guys and welcome to another episode of Knife Thursday and today I'm going to be talking about the Benchmade 808 Loco and uh, you can see there this is my Loco that I acquired through a trade. This is a first production number 14 of a thousand. Uh, really excited to get that loan number. I've never had a first production before so anyway um, I'm not going to go over like the whole full review of this knife but what I did want to do since I promised is uh, I have been waiting for a while to put a wicked edge on this it still has the factory edge now the factory edge was acceptably sharp and it would pop hair and all that stuff um, but I definitely want to put my edge on it so today is going to be a bit of a demonstration of the wicked edge system which I have which is the Pro Pack 1 here and uh, we'll see how sharp we can get this. Uh, if you hear noises in the background, it's just my dog walking around, please forgive that. Um, we got hardwood floors and he's got nails. So anyway, I've got my stuff laid out here. I keep it in uh, tackle boxes and uh, we'll just get right into it. I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks on how to get this. I'm not gonna show the entire process of me sharpening it because it would be a lengthy video, but uh, I'm gonna get this thing set up tell you uh, how I get these things in the rig and then I'm just gonna go to town and kind of explain as I go so stick around now first thing you want to do is get your knife in the clamp um, for most of these since this has a decent little flat grind at the top it makes it really good for clamping it um, I'm gonna set uh, my little depth charge depth charge depth gauge here to the top one I almost always use the top just just because. Uh, and then I'll go till the knife is touching both the prongs. And I think what I want to do on this one is I usually put the scale on here for uh, how far, you know, this is like positions the, the blade. Um, I think I'll go to, well, right about there looks pretty good. That'll get me far back enough to where I can reach all the way down to sharpen here and still get the tip and that looks like it's on the B.5 mark so uh, I will write that down so <clears throat> uh, Wicked Edge sends you a little book to keep track of everything and uh, you could make your own if you wanted but I'll just do it here I uh, put the oh, I don't know if you can see this over here I put this is the brand the model degrees per side um, and this is the mark, which is B.5, which I put in there, and the top. And I'm going to find, I'm probably going to make it 20 degrees per side. But what I'm going to do now is check this uh, with, just use a red Sharpie and try to color the entire edge. Make sure it's done on both sides. And then I'll put it on 20 degrees, which is about where I want to be. I'll take my 1,000 grit stones and I'll just do a couple light passes and check. Now it's hitting most of the edge, which means I won't have to do too much reprofiling. Let me just check this other side. Okay, not gonna see much on this camera. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. Um, sorry for the camera work here, guys. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, you should be able to see there that there is a decent amount like this part is pretty good here um, And then it's hitting more along the top there and then closer down there What I found is that it's just small differences in the hand ground edge that they all do at the factory So it's never they're never perfect from the factory once you put them on a machine You know a system like this you find out that no knife is ground perfect from the factory some are very close But they're never perfect perfect so I'm just going to leave it right at 20. That's a really good angle, in my opinion, for uh, you know all around use. And I'm just going to start sharpening this. I'm going to drop down. I'm not going to use the thousand grit off the bat because I, I will have to do some reprofiling. But since it's not severe, I'm going to start with the 400s. I'll take a couple passes so you guys can see kind of the technique. Then I'm going to speed up. I'll probably cut. Um, and go through the stones or just speed it up a lot so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me take one pass. But for reprofiling, uh, you always want to work up a burr or a wire. 
Um, so I'll start on one side till I get a wire over here, and then I'll go to the other side and I'll, I'll work on it till I get a wire over here, and then I'll start my alternate passes because I want to make sure that it's meeting along the whole edge. Uh, before I do that, I always take a little bit of tape, which I have in my bag over here, and uh, I'm going to take a break and put some tape on here so I don't get any metal filings in the mechanism. So uh, let's take a break and then I'll get started after I get it taped up. All taped up and ready to start profiling. I'll start on this side and then I'll go uh, to this side. And uh, some people think it's a little overboard to do all this taping, but why do I want pieces of diamond and S30V grinding away at those soft uh, phosphor bronze bushings? It just doesn't make sense. You invest in a good knife, take care of it. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Uh, some tips, um, when you get close to the edge, just really pay close attention. I've slipped off a couple times and come back and just had the, the blade just knife right into my thumbs. On both thumbs, I've got considerable scarring uh, from both of them. So definitely something to just take your time, especially if you're learning to use the Wicked Edge for the first time. Okay, so I've got a burr along part of it, but I still need, I can still see red at the tip and right at the, the base here. So I'm gonna... Uh, periodically I use uh, just a paper towel just to carefully wipe off the edge so the metal filings are away and I can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting pretty close. What I'm gonna do is cut the camera and get both these sides profiled and then show you guys some of the back and forth like the single sided strokes just so you get an idea of how to use this. Really profiling is very simple. You just file on one side till you, you'll literally be able to feel it. Um, I mean, th there'll be no question that you've raised a burr. So let me just uh, turn the camera off here. I'll get both sides profiled and then come back to you with a couple single strokes. And uh, when we're all said and done, this sucker's gonna have a mirror polish and be hair splitting sharp. Okay guys, so that didn't take long. Uh, I've got, I profiled both sides. Even at 400 grit, um, you'll really feel this thing be quite sharp. Even at, uh, when I've done, you know, one and 200 grit on knives that needed a lot of profiling, um, they still feel quite sharp at this point. So uh, now that I've profiled both sides, you wanna make sure that you remove that wire. And if you could zoom in enough, you can actually see some very, very fine wires um, just of, of metal that just a tiny little thing that's removed when when you push that burr back and forth it eventually breaks off and comes off as a very small wire Some in, sometimes in small pieces sometimes in longer pieces but anyway um, when you're uh, making your passes since we're gonna go back and forth now you just want to make sure that you're applying even pressure and you don't want to be twisting the stone back this way you don't want to be twisting the stone forward because you'll end up rounding off the tip or not reaching the tip uh, and just get some funky grind lines. So not a whole lot of pressure. You don't have to bear down on it and try to keep it nice and neutral um, so that you get the whole thing. If you find that you're not getting a portion of the, the tip, you can try putting a little back pressure and then a little front pressure and just alternate your strokes like that. And sometimes I find with weirdly ground blades, I can get the whole thing if I alternate the pressure like that. But it's it's very little. You're, you're really not torquing the stones much. It's just a slight pressure. Anyway, let's get some passes done here. When I'm done with that, I'll just spin these around and go to the 600 grit. And uh, I'll go till I remove all the scratches from the 400 grit. And that's basically how you're gonna work your way through the rest of the stones. So I'm not gonna bore you by working my way through the stones, but what you, what you will notice is that the pressure becomes lighter and lighter and the sounds become quieter and quieter. So I'm gonna show you a couple passes, work through these, and then come back when I get to the ceramics and then the straps. So just uh, take a watch and maybe get some technique on this. Okay, when you're satisfied uh, that everything is nice and smooth, I usually give it a wipe down so I'm not getting 
any uh, of the larger pieces into the finer stones. Switch my stones around and now I'm going to do the 600 grit, which you might see um, some of these are chewed up. I might talk about that in another video. I just took off some of the plastic on the edge so I could get in close on certain grinds of knives for different customers. So anyway, let's, uh, let's do the 600 now. You notice the 600 grit is slightly quieter. And uh, one thing you want to remember to do is try to get, try to take some strokes that are just at the heel because the whole rest of the knife is getting, you know, you're only hitting this heel for a split second as you come off it. So you want to take some dedicated strokes to get that whole thing. Uh, otherwise you'll have lots of scratches back here when you're finished and it won't be as nice as the rest of the blade. So that's just a little tip, keep things nice and even. Check every so often. You can look right there and you'll be able to, camera's not gonna pick it up, especially at this distance, but um, you'll be able to see the difference in the scratch pattern and the size and depth of the scratches between the grits. When you stop seeing the, the uh, lower grit, then you know that you've done your job on this grit and you can move on. I'll take a few more passes and then I'll move on to the 800, then to the 1000, and then the 12 and 1600 grits on the uh, ceramics. And that's when I'll check back in. Okay guys, so I worked through the 800 and 1000 grit. I'm satisfied. And now I'm going on to the ceramic stones. And I do these slightly differently than and maybe other people do, but um, this is what works for me. So I don't just do alternating passes with these. Um, I, I do a little bit of scrubbing with them. Uh, and I do kind of like scrubbing passes uh, on the 1200 till the polish starts to really come out. Then I switch the 16 and you get a really good mirror going. Then you go to the strops and obviously that's all alternating. And that really polishes the edge and makes it, makes it quite sharp. Uh, I mean, it's quite sharp now. It's, more than you know much more than factory sharp right at this point uh, but this will really do a nice job so i'll show you a couple of the scrubbing passes what i mean by that with uh, the 1200 grit ceramics right now and you can hear that these passes are quite a bit quieter than the lower grit and I'm just lightly going and I'll go through and do a bunch of these. I'll go back and forth like this, maybe five or six times on each side. And then I'll alternate it where I'll just go one way, like this. Okay, and, and I'll work it until I really like the polish and I see a lot of the scratches disappearing. Then I'll flip it over to the 1600 and do the same thing. So I'm going to let the camera roll and I'll just speed up the film so you guys can see some of this. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the 1600 because I like how the 1200 is, is looking. And the 1600 is even finer. You can barely hear them and, and I will do more of those back and forth scrubbing passes because uh, the finer the grit, the you know, longer it takes to affect the metal essentially in a way that you know actually makes a difference. So I don't know if the camera, how well it will pick it up, but there's definitely a decent shine coming out right now and you can begin to see you know, that mirror polish starting to show up with these passes. If you have a different way of doing this, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Um, but don't just comment for the sake of, you know, slashing what I do or saying that it's garbage and it doesn't work. Uh, I get very good results as far as sharpness. You know, there might be different ways to make a better mirror polish, but um, when I can whittle hair every time, uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, so I don't know. I, I get good results. So 
just remember there's always more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to sharpen a knife. Even when you're using the same system, there's more than one way to uh, get good results with a wicked edge. You don't just need to do it the way you know so and so does it or this one does that. Um, I've kind of changed how I do it over time and I've found what works for me and if you end up getting this system you might find that you don't really like the way I do it and you find that for the way you are you get better results doing XYZ you know who knows it might, might be something totally different um, but just because you're different doesn't mean you're wrong if your knife is sharp at the end of the day and you're happy with it then you did it right as far as I'm concerned okay so getting a pretty good polish on there I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see focuses. You can start to see the uh, mirror finish on there. It's getting pretty good. So I'll take a few more back and forth or just, you know, short scrubbing passes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the strops. And the strops, you have to take whatever angle you're set at down here. Let me pull this back out. Whatever angle you're set at down here, you want to widen it at least two degrees for the strops, especially if you have a coated blade because you'll wear away the coating at the base of the edge and it'll look terrible. And uh, especially if you're going to be sharpening four other people, you want to make sure that their stuff looks great when you send it back as well as being sharp. So I'm just going to back these out to 22 degrees, tighten them back down. And uh, one little trick on mine, I always wiggle the arms after I tighten it and then check them again just so that I know that they're seated properly. I think on the Pro Pack 3 or the Generation 3 arms, you don't have to worry about that, but this is an older style, so I do have to worry about that. Always keep your strops in little bags and keep them separate from everything. You don't want them getting contaminated with other stuff. Um, I recently loaded these up with um, paste, so I'm, I'm not going to go through and do that. You might see my strops and say, wow, those things are chewed up, those are beat up. Yeah, they're a little beat. I could probably replace them, but they're still doing an excellent job. So with the strops, you have to be very careful to not come down on them. You only want to go up and away. Uh, otherwise, you will chop up your strop and it'll look like that. Those are some rookie mistakes. Um, so this is the 5 micron paste, the yellow paste that I start with, and then I go to the 3.5 micron. Uh, so I'll do a bunch of strops or uh, stropping passes here. I usually just kind of count this down in my head. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. I'll show you a couple passes, and then I'll show you the last couple passes after I switch to the green compound. So, because, uh, I mean, it's just going back and forth. You guys don't need to see the whole thing. But uh, I'll just show you a little bit of the stropping. And again, make sure that in the beginning I usually take a little bit of time and just go to the, the back of this blade, the heel, um, just to make sure that that's getting enough attention. And then I'll go and do the rest of the blade and then when I'm almost done with this compound I'll go back and hit the heel again just to make sure everything is honky dory. Okay guys, that should just about do it. I'm going to give this a quick wipe down and uh, also remember to wipe down the blade in between your stropping. You don't want to get the more coarse compound on the finer side. Um, yes, very good. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, on my personal blades, I usually don't spend a crazy time getting the best mirror polish just because I'm going to use them and they're going to get dull because I use all my stuff. So I don't go nuts with it, but I definitely do like having uh, a, a decent mirror polish on there. Uh, I'm going to take this out now and give you guys some close-ups and let you see. You saw in the beginning of the video what the edge looked like, uh, what all factory edges look like, and then when I get through, that's the polish they have. 
nice and reflective super sharp tip to heel and uh, well, let's get this tape off of here I just use painters tape sometimes on G10 you might see a little bit of the tape residue left over and uh, that just wipes off with like a damp damp washcloth or sometimes a little bit of alcohol but I try to stay away from the alcohol on G10 it seems to dry it out and make it look weird sometimes so anyway there you have it guys from uh, you know a factory edge to stupid sharp uh, and not that long on the Benchmade 808 local let's do a little shave test here and uh, I'll sacrifice the look of my hand uh, for the sake of showing you guys how easily this thing shaves Yeah, so does the job. That was one little pass, and now I look like a dope. So, yeah, Wicked Edge does a good job every time. Uh, not just a good job, does an excellent job every time. So, if you guys are interested in getting a Wicked Edge, I hope this helped you. If you don't want to drop that kind of money, but you do want to have a great edge on your knives you can send them to me find me on instagram i'm at rev hiker and uh there's a way to contact me there or you can contact me through here and uh you guys can send me your knives and i'll sharpen them so just check out uh instagram for a price list if you're curious uh thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this episode of knife thursday if you did don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe god bless you guys as always and i will catch you next time